The following program is a special presentation of the Big Ten Network, produced in association with the University of Wisconsin. Hip-hop in the classroom, in the Midwest, in the Big Ten, the University of Wisconsin's First Wave program is where it's happening. First Wave combines social activism, community outreach, and hip-hop to provide an innovative and unique educational experience. We'll discuss the role hip-hop has played at UW-Madison next, during office hours. Hi, I'm Ken Goldstein, Professor of Political Science at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. It's poetry for the 21st century. Hip-hop has come to academia. Joining me to discuss UW's innovative first wave program is Chris Walker, Professor of Dance at UW-Madison and Artistic Director for the First Wave program. He is also a dancer and choreographer with the National Dance Theater Company of Jamaica, and his choreographies have been performed in Jamaica, New York, and England. Chris, welcome to Office Hours. It's very much a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for having me. So let me let me let me sort of play off what we what we talked about in our intro there. It is a little bit jarring. You know, you don't think about hip hop happening in the Midwest at a Big Ten university, mm -hmm. um, and you may not even think about hip hop being in a university setting at all. I Tell can, me how this came about. I can understand, firstly, how it can be jarring, because there is a misconception as to what hip hop really is, and Oftentimes the definition is the commercial hip hop, which is only one element of what is a culture. It's only one artistic manifestation of an entire culture. So to think that a culture like hip hop does not have educational pedagogical systems in place, you know, is, is, is a little bit. <laughs> That's so, so, so say more about that. So what most people think about hip hop is what they're seeing on MTV or right. what they're reading which is, in a magazine. Which is one artistic manifestation of the hip hop culture. Other manifestations are, are in the other forms of hip hop arts, um, through dancing, through visual arts, um, graffiti and graffiti inspired um, works. Um, and there is an educational possibility that comes out of any work of art because a work of art is already a distilled process and its response, it's usually in response to social concerns, especially the hip hop art. So we need the talk of hip hop education. What we're talking about is how we can break down the educational narrative that exists in the art that is created in that culture. So, so tell me more about that. So, you know, Art at its best is challenging Absolutely. something. Absolutely. And there's certainly a long tradition at many universities, mm -hmm. including the University of Wisconsin, Absolutely. of performance <laughs> art being part of what we do. Yes. And I actually want to get back to UW's role in a second. Yes. So hip hop is a sort of newer form of art, but plays mm -hmm. into all sorts of, we have performance art, we have dance, we have symphony here. And you think of the influence of the hip hop culture and what is American culture. Is it possible to speak of contemporary American culture without involving hip hop? And let's not even think of the music, let's just think of the way we dress. Let's think of the way we walk. Let's think of the way we speak. Earlier, um, I heard one of your students said I was in such and such a class and you said, how was it? And you said it was cracking. And you know, for Someone of course, my who, response was, was, did you like the class or not like the class? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> my point, exactly. So, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to um, bottle, um, bottle things um, and not allow the possibilities to present themselves. Can, can we define hip hop? What, is, what does hip hop mean? You know, I think a lot of people would mean yeah. it's a hoodie. Right? right? Hip hop is a culture. Hip hop is a cultural movement, which means to define hip hop, you have to break down the indices of culture. What are the elements that make up culture? What do all cultures have in common? And can you do that with hip hop? Yes. I mean, for the purpose of this discussion, um, I think let's define hip hop as, you know, contemporary American culture originating in urban centers in the United States. Um, you know, we can go on and on and find other definitions. Certainly there are many published, um, but for the purpose of this discussion, the hip hop arts that we focus on is the work that is created by the students who are coming out of um, these urban communities who express themselves through writing and through other forms of um, performance. Great, and when we come back, I want to hear more about your personal story and how you got to, 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 to teaching about hip hop and how you got to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So please stay with us on Office Hours. We're talking about hip hop and hip hop at the University of Wisconsin-Madison.
This program is a production of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. If you have comments about this broadcast, please email them to programming at uc.wisc.edu. Where others saw lumber, we recognized a treasure. Where others saw the night, we chose the stars. Where others saw pieces, we unlocked the puzzle that could mean the end of paralysis and cancer. Since 1848, thinkers and achievers at Wisconsin have fearlessly sought ideas that transform the world. Keep on, Wisconsin. Keep on. Welcome back to Office Hours. We're here with Chris Walker talking about hip hop at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So Chris, I want to hear your personal story of the first time you heard about University of Wisconsin-Madison was actually the first time you heard about formal dance training. Tell the me first about time, that. The first time I considered it um, beyond um, watching the ballet on a Sunday morning on television. Um, I was in a hotel in Jamaica. I performed in the hotel industry. Um, and I picked up this book written by Margaret Dobler. Um, at the time I said H. Dobler, I didn't know how to pronounce her name. But it introduced me to um, dance as curricular studies and as co-curricular studies. And it was creative dance for children. And you could use dance to teach children how to express themselves in, in language, how to express themselves in other forms, how to learn mathematics, how to learn geography. And it became exciting because I'd always danced but I'd never thought of it as an educational tool. That's so you're a 17 year old who's just working mm -hmm. to make some money at one of the Absolutely. resorts in Jamaica, and you're walking by the pool one day and they're sitting on a chair, is this book? Is that book. And I picked up the book, I decided I'd go to study formally at Edna Manley in Kingston, Jamaica, and I did my undergraduate there and then did graduate work. Full circle, and this is the beauty of, of this revolving theory that I've been in, and that is my life, is that I'm at uh, SUNY Brockport doing graduate work, and Claudia Melrose, who, who is a retired professor here, visited an old dance partner there who was my mentor in grad school. Oh, wow. And she took my information because she took my class, she liked what she saw, and when the position became available here, she called me several years later. And they recruited you. And it was UW Madison. Oh, that, that's amazing. <laughs> Full circle. Now, now what we, you, you talked about hip hop as an urban American Absolutely. creation. Absolutely. Was hip hop something that you were aware of growing up in Jamaica? And Absolutely. when you were recruited for this um, position, mm -hmm. you were recruited as a dancer and to uh, teach dance, but was there a hip hop component to that? Not, not initially. When I came, I came um, specifically to teach dance. In my first year here, I started to connect with different communities and campus that I felt was representative of me and the art forms that um, told my story. And so the Office of Multicultural Arts Initiatives events fill, fit that bill, fit that purpose. And so I became close to the work that they were doing. And that was the first year of designing the first wave program. So I was a part of that first um, discussion. And then the program started in my second year year here. But, but growing up in Jamaica, hip hop was something that you Absolutely. were familiar with. And if I was to go to Jamaica now, I would see that influence in Jamaica Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. We have our own form, which is called dancehall. And that is contemporary urban music and dance cultural form, which is similar to hip hop. They both grew up at the same time, um, differently in different countries, but have the same meaning behind the message. Great. So we're going to be right back, but before we leave, we're actually going to go to break and hear from a senior member of the first wave, first wave group, Sophia Snow, and she's going to give us her performance of Broken English. Sophia Snow. Sonia's mother got locked up this summer. It's September, and she's still trying to adjust. She doesn't know how to fall asleep without the noises of noses and needles outside her bedless bedroom doorless doorframe. She doesn't speak English yet, but she's fluent in anger with a Dominican accent, or rather she's fluent in I'm abandoned with a my mother is absent. My action, her actions speak louder than her broken English. Unfortunately, she won't be graded on how quickly she can make you cry or promoted based on how hard she punches. Standardized testing doesn't consider students who grew up without multiple choices, 
who can't fill in the blanks of innocence lost. So Sonia might not pass second grade this year. I think Johan has a little crush on her. It's April, and he just arrived from San Juan. Johan hears English like he hears flying bricks. He dodges. Johan has only seen the sweet side of Sonia, the part of her that bloomed months after her aunt stopped taking her to bang bony knuckles against bulletproof glass. As she tried to explain, she needs to put the phone to her ear to hear her. He's only seen the sweet side of Sonia, and he flies to her like a bee to a flower. He isn't familiar with smiles so sweet. It's January. Johan is in San Juan, locked in his abuela's basement. He cries with hands tied around a cement pole. Abuelita smacks his bare back with wet boiled towels. He cries hours later, locked shirtless in a cold basement, wet back. It's April. And Johan flies to Boston like a bee to a flower, only to find that Mozart Street isn't as sweet as his tia told him. On his way home from school, he dodges flying bricks and bullets like he dodges English. Too bad he won't be graded on how fast he runs. His actions speak louder than his broken English, and he can't tell you what it's like to leave everything behind without a Puerto Rican accent and he can't stand in line without flinching from flashbacks of lashed backs and he can't bear to see the bare pipes in the boys bathroom the sound of water sending him back and back and back to a Puerto Rican basement and you can't silence his fears in English he only speaks, I am from a place you refuse to acknowledge exists. And he sees that same place in Sonia's eyes. Yet the strangest smile blooms across her face whenever she finishes reading a new chapter in this tongue he's never known. He wonders if he'll ever have her smile while having her eyes, while having her story, while having his own. It's June. Neither Sonia nor Johan passed second grade this year. They both started too late. Standardized testing doesn't consider students who can't learn a language before they learn love, who can't learn love before they learn peace, who can't learn peace in a classroom that refuses to acknowledge that realities exist and follow them across cultures, across borders, beyond classroom, beyond theory. There is Sonia and Johan. Confused, upset, and alone, the last thing they need is another test in a language they have yet to learn. <laughs> Great People is our campaign for need-based scholarship aid. It's the key to the long-term well-being of the university as a whole. In 1970, tuition cost about $500. Today, it's about $9,000. We don't want UW-Madison to be a university that is deemed to be out of reach. The Great People Scholarship gives students a chance to succeed in life. Support the Great People Scholarship. Visit uwgreatpeople.org. Welcome back to Office Hours. We're talking with Chris Walker from the Dance Department about hip hop and the first wave program at the University of Wisconsin, Madison. So Chris, I want to show some tape here of you teaching a class. Great. We just heard from one of your students, Sophia, um, uh, the spoken word, mm -hmm. but there's also dance components to what Absolutely. you're doing as well. So let's take a look at this class. And why don't you tell us what we are seeing here? Uh, this is our students warming up and I, like to warm up with movement because my philosophy is it's difficult for the body to lie and we store so much in the body and since what we do is storytelling the core of the pedagogy is what we can learn from the personal narrative what we try to discover is what we store in our bodies from those experiences and how might this differ from a normal sort of dance class that you might teach? Yes, I, I teach technique at the mm. university, which is based on very set technical structures that you take the body through to fortify the body to be able to do certain movements the same way every single time. Um, you know, to be able to articulate movements in a safe and efficient manner. This um, that we do with First Wave is more creative movement. It's about discovering 
the movement potential of the body and discovering the body as, an, as a tool for communication. So when, when, you're, when you're sitting on the floor and the student's looking at you and you're instructing right. them, what are, you, them what are you telling them? Right, I'm giving them prompts. I'm, I'm asking them to probably dig deeper. I'm asking them to try it in different ways, try it in different directions, try it in different levels, change the dynamic quality, change the mood of it, change the environment. They may be moving in thin air and then suddenly we change the environment to moving in molasses. How does that affect what you're communicating with your body? Um, so so, it's, 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 so you're almost part director, absolutely. part <laughs> technical dance yeah, uh -huh. teacher, as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you prepare for that mix? Because you had, you had a very sort of traditional technical dance training, right? I had a traditional technical dance training, but I had a lifetime of improvis imp improvisation. Dances that are based on your personal interpretation of the common dance vocabulary. And that is how I grew up. I grew up in rural Jamaica, where dance was used not just as a social expression, but it was an instrument of survival. It was a tool of survival, of maintaining a connection to your ancestry. And so the way those dances were performed and what they communicated and what they provided for the body was limitless. And so I saw that as a form of storytelling and a form of affirming the self and figured, if we can use this as specific clear theories in education, how can our students take that information when received physically and transfer it to other areas of learning. Okay, so we're going to take another break and we're going to hear from another student of yours who's actually a former student of mine as well from Poli Sci 104, First Wave group member Danez Smith. Imagine a boy. Imagine him black. His mama's baby. Imagine his first steps, his first fight, his excitement at the bike that he got for his sixth birthday. Imagine the picture that he took for his sixth grade football team. Imagine the ball stuck somewhere between his lifeline and his heart. This ball, this stained jersey, this numbered field, this is what he dreamed of, what he imagined himself one day. His mama could have told him that it wasn't probably likely, but who is she or we to stop the dreaming of a child? Imagine him dreaming. Imagine him. Kiss him. Love him. Love him. Get him, stop him, hurt him, destroy him, kill him. Imagine it's fourth and goal, and the only thing standing between your team and Super Bowl rings is this rookie who thinks that he can come in here and stop all over your defense like they are the walker mat to his kingdom, not in this house. We have waited years for a championship in this city, in this abyss of a city. We need some light, some hope, something to believe in, and who is he or anybody to take that away from us? We are up by three. Blue 42, one stop, and we are kings. Blue 42, we need this snap. We are burning for this hot snap. Jump, touchdown. On the evening news, the name of a child is rushed through the lips of a neutral newscaster in order to get to the sports quicker. Just a, another child lost to a bullet, but how could this football team lose another one? That's the fourth loss this season. What's going on with them? They need to get it together before it's too late. Late on a Saturday afternoon, someone's son is somewhere on the south side slipping in and out of consciousness. Won't be found until sunrise Sunday. It's too late. 44th life we lost this season. What's going on with them? Who's trying to change this? What is it about our city streets that fly swat children and turn them into corner store memories? Imagine the stadium built so that the team could play better the next season. Imagine the schools in this same city. Imagine the salary of the player bought here to be a game changer. Imagine the money spent to make sure that the depth that sprouts in summer never sowed seeds in the first place. Do we see the problem here? It's all glory to God and the Bears. Bow before the Father and the Packers. Praise Jesus. And them Vikings, but you angels, you, with bullet holes still smoking in your wings, the smell of death still fresh on your halos, we're sorry for mourning you so quietly. You deserve more than our whispers and wax, more than our tears and our ability to move on. You deserve a riot, such a beautiful riot, no death, just life. An arrangement of flowers won't suffice, just imagine your death worth more than a touchdown. Victory. This program is a production of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. If you have comments about this broadcast, please email them to programming at uc.wisc.edu.
Welcome back to Office Hours, where we're talking about hip hop and the first wave program at University of Wisconsin Madison. And now we're joined by Sophia and Denez, who performed for us in the last two segments. And uh, you know that 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 was great. And there's all sorts of questions I have for you and comments afterwards. All all positive. Um, Sophia, um, tell me how doing hip hop, doing first wave, how you're from Massachusetts, how you ended up at UW Madison, mm -hmm. and how that, your training with Chris, plays into the other sorts of normal things that a college student does. Um, well, I was recruited for first wave um, from Boston. Uh, a friend of mine who was a part of a youth group in Chicago called Young Chicago Authors went to school out in Harvard and he was telling me about how this new program was going to start the next year. I was a senior then um, and they did hip hop theater and I was like Wisconsin? What's Wisconsin? No way. I didn't even know where that was on a map. And um, <laughs> uh, hey, city girl. Um, so eventually a couple months later I guess he told them about me and I got a call from the, um, from the office uh, just saying, you know, about this amazing program, and the next thing I knew, the executive director flew out to Boston, and we had dinner, and he just sold it to me. He was saying, you know, to get a full ride to grow artistically and academically, um, and I was sold. Excellent. So, and Denez? Um, how did I get here? Um, <laughs> I had heard about um, Wisconsin two years prior to coming here. Um, I had came and first wave was just a baby of so an you're idea. from Minneapolis. I'm from Minneapolis. You could find us on a map. I could find you on a map. <laughs> okay. I drove through here on the way to Chicago. Didn't <laughs> okay. stop. Um, <laughs> didn't stop at all. Um, but I came and the first wave was just this baby of an idea and I said, hip hop at university is not really going to happen. Um, but then I got a call my senior year and they were like, well, we're actually doing it. And I was like, oh, wow. So I came um, and it's just been a really great experience. I mean, I've tried to incorporate things that I learned in first wave into a lot of my other classes. I'm an education major now, so in my classroom, I try to do as much as the work that we do here at the university with my students. Um, so it's just been really, really great. T tell me more about that, because I imagine being active, energe energetic, mm -hmm. articulate, moving is going to help you when you go teach. Yeah, it's, it's really great. I mean, if you can keep up with the kids, that's a great thing. But I think also the other thing that's taught me is just how. Um, how education doesn't need to be about the teacher, about what they're learning, but about my students learning for themselves and learning about themselves and using the tools that they already have to explore so many other things. So it's not necessarily about me being at the front of the classroom for 45 minutes at a time talking to them about history or about a book that we just read, but about me giving them the materials and saying, go at it. You know, make it your own. Make it something that you can understand. Don't. I'm not going to give them a test and say, "Show me what you know." I want them to show me how they learn. So, Chris, we, we're we're not only recruiting uh, the Big Ten football champion athletes here, but we're also recruiting other sorts of we are scholars recruiting. here Absolutely. who are also doing things, and they can find out about that. How? Absolutely. We've got a couple seconds left here. Our students um, are primarily channeled through the Brave New Voices um, Poetry Festival, and that's how most of them find out about the program. But they can find out about us on omai.wis.edu um, or just visiting the university website and searching for First Wave. Um, love Dennis's response because he talked about the core of the pedagogy, which is based on identifying the student's strength and returning education to the student. Chris, want to have you back. Thanks to both of you. Thanks to all of you for joining us on Office Hours. Please stop by again. Great. Thanks, guys. And then we'll be on for a couple more questions. The preceding program was produced by the University of Wisconsin in association with the Big Ten Network.